Hello everyone, Human Hard Drive here. Today, uh, I want to talk about a new series I'm going to start uh, with this video, actually. If you remember this, this is the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I did a little unboxing and a little talk about this about a year ago, that sounds about right. Uh, I was actually one of the first people to be able to get one of these, and I was really happy. Um, this is actually a Rev2 board. I bought this a little while ago at Maker Fair, and... I did try to do a series on it, if you remember. I think there were like three videos. Wasn't that great. So I haven't really touched it in a while. So I figure rather than trying to give you a whole walkthrough of this is what you need to do with a Raspberry Pi to get it working. Kind of boring. Not that great. Uh, I want to do a series, 101 uses for the Raspberry Pi. So we're actually going to be talking actual applications of through various projects. In this case, 101 projects. So, yeah, so here we go. This is my new Raspberry Pi, Rev 2. Not the first one I got. The first one I got, I've cannibalized. So, if I zoom out, and this is going to be the first project, it's what I did with my Raspberry Pi, is this. I made this black box here. This is just a simple project enclosure I got from Radio Shack. So, if I shake this open, you can see I've cannibalized the board quite a bit. If I zoom in again, there we go. So, yeah, here we have it. First res my first Raspberry Pi board. So what I've done is I've turned this into a RasBMC and XBMC media server. Because basically I wanted to be super lazy and watch YouTube videos from my bed without having to hook up my laptop to my TV. So that's what this was. It also, if you've ever done anything with XBMC, it's a really great um, program. runs across all platforms. And it creates a media server, and you're, a whole bunch of plugins you're able to do with it. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, this is what I did, and this is what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, we're not going to be go doing everything I did to this. Obviously, I've removed the power supply and tweaked it with a wall wart, which there you go, wall wart. Uh, so yeah, so we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be running it off the USB. I mean, obviously, you can cannibalize the power supply if you want. You'd, there are a couple of uh, just Google that. It's pretty straightforward. So, what are you going to need for this? Well, obviously, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. Uh, any Rev at this point will do. Uh, you've got two choices to connect to the internet because XBMC is obviously an internet. Me well, it's not. It doesn't have to be internet enabled, but I want mine internet enabled. So, the first, you've got two options. One, you can use the Ethernet port on this if you have a handy wired connection available to you. I don't, so I've got a USB dongle. Uh, you should look online. I'll post a um, link in the description as to what peripherals work with the Raspberry Pi as of now. Uh, this is one. This is a Belkin 802.11g. Uh, makes on the back. It's probably not going to... Oh, maybe it will focus on that. No, so... Oop, move my camera. Uh, what is this? This is a wireless G USB network adapter. Belkin. Uh, so yeah, you can go wireless or you can go wired, either or. I'll leave that there. You're also going to need, obviously, an SD card. Uh, this one is eight gigs. Eight gig yeah, it's eight gigs. So uh, the size of the card is dependent on what you want to do. Uh, two gigs, I think, is the minimum to hold the operating system and a couple plugins. Uh, you're going to want more storage if you want to store media on the SD card itself. So if you want to store music and videos and photos and such, you want to obviously just store it on this. But because uh, this is going to be wireless or wired or connecting to the internet, you're probably not going to need as much space. Again, it's all dependent on what you want. And you're going to need some way to hook it up to uh, TV. You've got a couple options. Again, you've got HDMI and you've got uh, v not VGA, RCA connection. And you're going to need to power it. Obviously, you're going to need a micro USB. You're not going to need anything more than probably an amp power supply. So, s probably your cell phone charger, I think, will output 750 milliamps, which is fine. This isn't going to draw too much power. So, that's pretty much it. Now, to install the operating system, not going to really go into that. I did a video on that. It's pretty straightforward. You've got a choice. I'll put a link to the description. You've got two options in that case. The first one is noobs. All you do is put it on the SD card, and you run the Raspberry Pi for the first time, and it will give you a prompt saying, which of these do you want to install? And RaspBMC is one of them. Or you can just do a direct RaspBMC install. Again, completely up to you. I'll annotate a video in here as to how you do that. But 
so that's that. So let's go ahead and look at what RaspBMC looks like when you have it all running, and we'll go through a couple of the plugins and such. Okay, so here it is. Here's RaspBMC. Here's what it looks like. It looks pretty much exactly the same as XBMC, except there's a big R in the background if you keep the default theme, which I did, because I'm lazy. So uh, if you've never worked with XBMC before, if you've never seen it before, here's a quick rundown of everything you get. You've got a weather application right out, the, right out of the box. You can view pictures, videos, music. You've got programs, and you've got system settings. So each of these is a little application which you can add things onto, like pictures you have add-ons. Uh, if you go into the add-ons, there are a bunch of separate things you can add. If you go to get more, assuming my internet is working, which I hope it is, which is probably the first thing I should have checked. Yep, it's working. So yeah, all these things you've got access to. And again, there are a whole bunch more that aren't um, listed here that you can find online and then add back in pretty simply. Again, just a quick Google search will tell you about a lot of these things. So let's talk about a quick setup. If you're using Wired, you really don't have a lot to set up. You just plug it into your Ethernet connection and you're pretty much ready to go. If you don't have a Wired connection ready and you're using wireless like I am, here's how you do this. Uh, if I go into System Info, just to make sure I am in fact on the internet, I am on the internet, that's awesome. And you go to Programs. Now, there are a couple tutorials that will say, oh yeah, there's a Wi-Fi manager program you can get that will help you. I found that it actually causes a little more trouble than it's worth, so I do it this way. I go into the RaspBMC settings program, which loads, and you go into network configuration. You set yourself to a Wi-Fi network, and then you scroll down here, and then, wi and then you get your Wi-Fi SSID. That's mine. Are you my Wi-Fi? Uh, you can scan the networks, which will list all of the networks within the area. As you can see, people here are kind of clever. But yep, you've got, so then you just pick which one's yours. You select it. It adds it to the list. Or once you've selected it, it adds it to the one you've selected, to the one you want. And then you just put in your Wi-Fi key. And it's pretty straightforward. So let's talk about a couple of the things that I have set up that I like and they're really helpful. So if we go and do system and settings and we go down to services, a couple of things you're going to want to add. Uh, if you look at the UPnP, uh, I don't use a lot of these things. Universal plug and play is sort of a weird thing. I don't use it. I'll use an FTP server, which again we'll talk about. Uh, I do enable this as a web server, though, to allow uh, XBMC control via HTTP. We will talk about that. Uh, you can set the port. I leave it as the HTTP default port, and I don't use a username or a password, so I can only I can access it via my um, my local Wi-Fi remote control. Uh, again, we'll talk to th about that in just a bit. Uh, this is interesting. You can actually have AirPlay connect to this. It will act as an AirPlay server, so you can do AirPlay music, AirPlay video, and AirPlay photos as well, which is really cool. So again, you might want to check that. You might want to check that box if you have an AirPlay-enabled device. Probably one of the few things I'm going to say nice about Apple. Okay. Other thing I mentioned was videos, add-ons. This is the YouTube thing, which again... Uh, again, you go to get more, and then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this, as soon as it loads, there we go, at the very bottom. Actually, if I go all the way up to the top, it might cycle. There we go. <laughs> and then you just go ahead and check that off. So what does that do? Well, if you have... Well, let's talk about the HTTP server here first. So, let's say you have a laptop, like I do, and I'll little cut here to my laptop screen. What you can do is, if you come over to your system and you go to System Info, this is after you've enabled the HTTP server, you can see, oh, the IP address for this is 192.168.1.10, or whatever it is for you, and you punch that. into 
your web browser, it brings this up, which you can use to remote control your XBMC server. So as you can see, I've got complete control over everything. Pretty straightforward. So yeah, that's the other. That's one thing you can do. There's another thing if you have Chrome, like I do. There's a plugin you can get called Play to XBMC, which uh, I'll link to in the description. And what this does is it lets you take YouTube videos and put them and stream them directly to your. So if I go to YouTube and I say pull up one of my videos. Uh, pull up one of my videos, say this one on wireless communication for the Arduino and I can just come up here and say play to XBMC um, in terms of settings you're obviously going to want to put in the correct US, uh, the correct IP address so hit save back play now and if you look at the RASPMC server, you can see opening stream. And it'll open the video. It will play at the highest native resolution. You can tweak that in the YouTube settings. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it okay, so a slight caveat with that turns out that if I change the recording resolution of my RSPMC as is what happens when I try to play the YouTube video the capture stops recording which is a bit of a pain but uh... it works just kinda take my word for it you saw that it loaded and I was able to control it very briefly via the XBMC media center now the cool thing about this is this you can actually get this as an app for uh, iOS and Android it's made by the guys at XBMC which gives you again full remote control of your RASPMC media server. So pretty nice, it acts as a pretty nice remote control so you can just whip out, whip out your phone and you know, start controlling your device. Um, I'd mentioned servers, so if you don't want to keep a bunch of the files on your uh, on your Raspberry Pi, on your SD card, if I go to music, say I want to play music, I can see that I have an FTP server on my PC. I can just click on that and it actually will give you access to everything. So I can just look at my music and depending on the FTP server you have, uh, if you run XBMC on your computer that actually acts as an FTP server and you can run the two in, you can run the two together so that your PC will act as the server and the RSPMC will be able to pull data from it and it's sorted in the same way the XBMC would run it, which again, very cool, very great, makes everything nice and seamless. XBMC works with XBMC no matter the platform, which is great. And again, it works for videos, it works for photos, it works for music. It's all really great. So again, this is a really great use for a Raspberry Pi. Uh, before I end this, let's talk some quick caveats with this system. If you're using a wires, wireless connection, like I am, um, it does have a tendency to not work the first time you run it. it. It's not the first time you come from boot to trying to set everything up. I can almost guarantee that the wireless isn't going to work. So what do you do? You just reboot it, and it should work second time around. It's just trying to get all the drivers working together. Uh, second thing, this is a Raspberry Pi, so your processing power is somewhat limited. So don't push it. There are some things you can do in music like you can run a graphical equalizer or a graphic visualizer in this case which will push the boundaries of the CPU will make it chug a little bit just you know keep in mind it's a little processor you can overclock it to get a little more speed out of it but again take pity on it it's a little slow but those are pretty much the biggest caveats oh the other thing if you're gonna do this I suggest leaving it on all the time it will complain if you shut it off without going through the proper procedure, which I will sh demonstrate now. If you come down here into the lower left-hand corner, you can see power, and you can see exit and power off the system. So, again, you will want to shut it off. This way you don't want to just pull power, because the next time you boot it, it will say, you didn't shut me off properly. Why didn't you do that? You should do that next time. So, yeah, there's that. 
big upshot to this is if you keep it connected and you boot it, this will automatically update. You never have to worry about having an old version of RaspBMC. Everything's kept up to date. All the drivers are up to date. Everything's pushed out automatically. Again, very great, very nice, very easy. Okay, so that's pretty much it. One last thing, though. For those of you who might want to, say, access the uh, access the, the terminal, what's it called? The shell. Ooh. If you want to do that, you come up here to exit, and then you're going to want to hold down the escape key, which will bring up the Raspberry Pi command line, and then you sign in, Pi Raspberry try to spell it correctly and then you've got access to the shell pretty easy pretty quick so yep that is pretty much everything uh, I guess for those of you who are interested in the shell yes you can SSH into it while XBMC is running so yeah, pretty nice it's a great use it's for the ras uh, for the Raspberry Pi it's why I have it. it enables me to be lazy and it will enable you to be lazy too so yeah that's it for this video uh, I'm human hard drive Thanks for watching.